You go by a, a jail, you don't think business. It's right. huge yeah. business. That's not something I've heard and I've interviewed a lot of people. Well, I spent a lot of time being gone and that was hard. There were some lonely, lonely times. If you're not looking to disrupt your company, then I, I think your business is going the other way and you're becoming irrelevant. Hi, I'm Candy Valentino, and for the last 25 years, I've been building businesses and generating wealth, starting my first business when I was just 19. Since then, I've gone on to build, scale, acquire, and exit businesses, all while investing in real estate and building financial freedom. Now it's all about you and why we're bringing you the real story behind building businesses and generating wealth here at The Candy Valentino Show. Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Candy Valentino Show. Super excited for you to get to meet my guests here today for this interview segment as we sit down with Patrick McMullen. Thanks so much for joining hey, us today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I love to be able to talk a little bit about your story because it's odd for me to find someone that's been doing it as long or longer than I have. So I love that you've been doing this for you know two, three decades you've been in business. Um, you're now a partner at Break Room Choices and a culture and revenue growth specialist. Tell me what that is first. Well, when you think of break rooms, it's bags and bottles. It's pretty simple. And we look to be so much more, be something that helps companies develop their culture. Because when it comes down to it, businesses need to look outside the box these days to try to keep employees. And when it comes down to it, we've done some pretty cool things that we'll talk about today that makes this so much more and, and takes something completely unrelated, learning, recruiting, and break rooms and brings them all together. That's so cool. So let's, I want to start backpack or backpack, backtrack a little bit and talk about your first businesses. How long have you been an entrepreneur? Since I was about 22. 22. Went to college? Yeah. What'd you go to college for? Business administration, University okay. of St. Thomas, out of the Twin Cities. And then came out, instead of going to work for another company, you started your own? Uh, not initially, but it, you know the, the entrepreneurial bug was always there. I had some side hustles when I was younger. Was a was a mortgage loan officer, so oh. you're all commission. You're self employed. Yeah, you're, right. You're into real estate. You understand that. Yeah. So I hustled, and and while I did do some W two jobs, I've always considered myself self employed or at a minimum. Yeah. I set I controlled my own destiny. Right. So self employed. And then you went and decided to build a company. What was in that? What was that first industry that you built in? Well, what it comes down to it is, I actually in in eventually joined our family business, which was a technology company. Oh. So after 18 years of being self-employed, not self-employed in the in the mortgage business, I truly became and got involved in our family business out of the Twin Cities and. Uh, we built some pretty cool stuff. So tech, not like apps? What type of technologies? So self-pay, self-service, and uh, in, in recession-proof industries. So when you look at uh, you know, my, my, my brother-in-law and his brother had a vision of doing something that was recession-proof. Mm -hmm. And so law enforcement and putting technology in county jails. And, uh, and eventually I joined the business after they got it going and we uh, we built a, a pretty cool company. So wait, you built technology in prisons? Yeah, inmates. It, a lot of people, when you drive by Candy, you go by a, a jail, you don't think business. It's right. huge yeah. business. There's human beings there. Yeah. And so we ultimately built a kiosk system that inmates use to buy sugars and salts. Eventually, we it, it was a business of evolution, evolved wow. into text messaging, video visitation. People could... You know, visit from home. They no longer had to come to the jail or bring the kids into the correctional facility. Wow. Uh, it got to where they could do movies and research their, their case if they wanted to be the jailhouse lawyer. And, and all along, we managed their money and their in, the, the inventory. So, and then that business evolved to where we said, gosh, we, we already have this business that's this tech company. Why are we just limiting ourselves to jails? Let's evolve it. And so we did. We started a self-pay business that went into the break rooms and uh, we joined an industry that was well-established, that was successful. We just became a, a big time player in it. And so that business became a business of evolution too. Yeah, and, they all are, <laughs> right? It was a, a great run. So, okay. 
I'm so fascinated by the jail thing <laughs> because that's not something I've heard and I've interviewed a lot of people. So you're bringing in technology for the people who are serving time yeah. to be able to, they had their money or is there like a different currency in jail for people to buy things? Great question. I'm booked in the jail. They're going to take every, all your property. Right. They take your money and it's fed into a bill acceptor. And when you're put into your cell or into your pod, you go log into the kiosk and there's, if you had money on you when you were arrested, mm -hmm. that money's there for you to use. Oh, wow. Okay. So that money's there for you, sugars and salts, candy bars, chips. So you're yeah. going to be there for whether it's 48 hours or 48 months, you're, you're looking for something other than jail food. Yeah. And someone can, can they, can outside people deposit into that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That I'll tell you what's like, so recession proof businesses fascinate me. And when you started to talk, I thought you were going to say gas stations and laundromats. Yeah. So that's why when you took a hard right turn to prisons, I was like, wait, we have to unpack this for a minute because that's not like someone doesn't start, oh, I want to start a business and I want to put technology in jails. So seeing that proof of concept and how well it did, you then decide to take the same technology and use it with employees, but in a similar model. It well, it came down to is we, we took the kiosk system and the, the structure was there. We, had, we needed to manage money, manage inventory, and allow mm -hmm. people to check out. So there was this industry called micro markets where they, they were taking out traditional vending machines and putting in mini self pay convenience stores and break rooms. So we saw what was going on and we thought, gosh, we can compete here. And so we did. And we diversified and became two businesses. And all of a sudden, Either that business took off and we evolved that business too. Instead of just doing technology, we started saying, well, gosh, they need to have merchandising equipment. So coolers, fixtures, we got into that business and continue to evolve it. And ultimately, that's, that's where I always look at. If you're not looking to disrupt your company, and that's where I am today, if you're not looking to disrupt it and always try to be stay relevant and ahead, then I, I think your business is going the other way and you're becoming irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So do you still do that with your brothers? No, we no. we exited last year. They're still involved. I I decided that I wanted to be, a, I, I commuted back and forth mm. in, in the business based in the Twin Cities. I, I love my home in Arizona. Reached an intersection where I wanted to stay here and we had the opportunity to do it. So I exited and uh, had another vision and uh, it's probably the vision that excites me the most of my entire career. And what's that? Well, that's, that's where we took the break room business and said, okay, I'm in break rooms, I understand it. Mm -hmm. And it's a business that when done well, it really is a great employee benefit. But we said, gosh, you know, we could do so much more. Just think about this, Candy, for a second. You're the HR director who in the break room business, 90% of the time, that's who we work with. Mm -hmm. What else do you handle? Mm -hmm. Training, recruiting, payroll, benefits. So instead of always trying to sell bags and bottles to the employees, why don't I just sell more services to you? Because you're gonna like us because we do a great job. So we built what's called Break Time University that takes learning. And what makes it different than LinkedIn Learning or Masterclass is we have short five minute segments that you, you watch a whole series of them and you get an instant reward in the break room. So we took learning, gamified it, and just made us different. And that HR director, all of a sudden, it looks like a hero because the employees are trained better, culture's better, they get instant rewards. People love free stuff. And it, it's gotten traction and it's fun. So the employees in the break room, do they watch trainings from their own company or can it be personal development? Or is it just whatever the company chooses to upload, if you will, to that? Or D, all the above. Okay, all so the above. So we have a segment where we have some folks like you that are experts that we'll have to talk about that. Uh, but <laughs> coming they to are break new coming near to you. The, <laughs> but uh, that, that there are New York Times bestselling authors mm -hmm. that uh, they have material that's a list material that we took, and it's it wasn't taking their book; it's taking their their lengthy book and cutting it into five minute highlights mm. to people that. How to buy a house? Think about. I mean, that's your background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How to buy a house in this market? Imagine being a first-time home buyer. So I, I have a, a very good friend of mine that he's very well known for helping people buy their first homes. Mm -hmm. So we put together a series of learning sprints to how to buy your house in this market, to wellness, nutrition, how to take care of your car, leadership, sales. To the other side of it is, is 
customize. If you want to have something that's custom for your company, we, we have an organization out in Mesa that we're building a customized set. So there, it's a mix. Very and cool. then all of it leads back to is instant rewards that they can use, which then helps our break room business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an ever feeding machine. And what are the rewards? Like you get a bag of chips? Your favorite liquid death that I know you're oh, trying to get rid gotcha. of. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Everything from, uh, like, we work. So they get, like, points. Points. They get, they, the more lessons they consume, the more points they get. more points you get, the more credit you get to use in the, in the break room. Very cool. So, and then we're working with some prominent product suppliers like Liquid Death and, mm -hmm. and others that they want to they promote their products. So they, mm -hmm. they're getting involved. And so if that's, it comes back to, it's just perceived value. People mm -hmm. They'll engage it more, and again, it doesn't take 26 minutes to complete. Mm -hmm. Where break time you came from is, I can watch it. It's five, six minutes long. I get rewarded for doing it, and then I can get onto Instagram and follow right. Candy's latest yeah. post to right. social media to visit in with their with their coworkers. So it's it you can fit it in your break room or in your break time, and so that's where the name came from. Very cool. And then the other products that you have in there, like the actual concession items, the vending machines. Or a part of the other company with your brothers? No, well, we bec I became a client in my old business. Oh, okay, awesome. Okay, so okay. now I use the technology that that I help Very cool. be part of our team to develop. So now I'm a client of my old business, and Break Room Choices. That's the, that is the if you want to call it vending company, mm -hmm. the Break Room company. Uh, I, I own that with uh, two great friends and partners up in Salt Lake City, and we expanded down here in the Phoenix, and we have. 350 locations and counting and uh but we're taking through our network candy of all those folks that i know because i was the tech provider i know operators across the country we're going to leverage that network to take break time you recruiting my the business i'm involved there recruiting choices and some other stuff that's coming and we want to be the trusted advisor going back to that hr scenario we just think about that sales cycle. You understand that pretty well is if I meet with you today, I can have your break room in, in two weeks. We do a great job in another two weeks. You love us. We keep doing a great job. Some of the other service providers that they have, we work our tail off to, to really be great at something very simple. So they say, gosh, Patrick does this, 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 and this. And break room choices, uh, John and Darren up in Salt Lake, they're, they're all involved in this training, recruiting, our recruiter hasn't called me in three months. I'm going to give Patrick a try. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm not involved in that. I don't have to do anything. I hand it off to my recruiting choices partners and bang. So it's just all about relationships. Mm -hmm. It's leveraging the relationship and, and really helping. And that's where I come back to that culture piece. Mm -hmm. You become a solution from the minute they walk in, the, even when they apply for that job. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. We become a one-stop shop. So then your target audience, you're trying to go get more corporations, that HR person, that's kind of who you're targeting to start the relationship with? Any business. Okay. The beauty of what, knowing what I know from my leading the tech company is the, the economics of it. And the, what drew me to my partners in Salt Lake is they saw it too. And that we don't need to go after the biggest companies in the world. We can go to a 70 person operation and when you think about that whole soup to nuts chain, if I'm doing their, if I'm there with a recruiter, their break room, I do coffee for them, I do their learning, that's a heck of a revenue stream, let alone a heck of a relationship that we have. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're not just a vendor, we're a partner to that company. Mm -hmm. So we'll go after anybody. Yes, we have some rather big companies that we are working with now in doing this one-stop shop, mm -hmm. but we have a couple small ones too some great success stories. So you've obviously had, you've saw a need, you saw technology that you already had, and I think this is valuable to any entrepreneur listening because you already saw a market, you understood the market, and rather than going and innovating something completely different in a new space, you kind of took what you knew, what you had experience in and expertise in, and you just adapted the model to serve a new market, yeah. which kind of then became a, a nice, you had proof of concept, it just became an arm which would then, in my, I always call it fastest path to cash. It's easier to do that than to go charter a rover to Pluto or, you know, create an electric car. It's like, that's an easier path. But it also doesn't mean that there aren't some hurdles. And so maybe you can share a little bit about 
before obviously this concept looks amazing and you're helping a lot of people, what were some of the struggles and challenges that you maybe had when you started this or one of the other companies? And what, what, what did it really take to overcome them so that you can continue down this journey? Great question. Well, everything starts with belief and is not only that you really have vetted your idea. It just can't be, gosh, throw it up against the wall and see if it sticks. You have to financially go through and, and work the model and say, yeah, eventually, can I make money doing this? Mm -hmm. Can I make a profit doing this? Can I make it a business? So yeah, I had to start there and, and, and develop that belief and, and, and that's multiple times we've gone through that. So can you turn it into a business that has value and is profitable? So you have gotta do the economics. Once you're there, then you gotta start, okay, the semantics and what is it gonna to take to get this to put together? then you gotta start convincing others. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I see that I've learned in my time is people that are very successful spend their time and what they're best at is communicating the belief and selling the, 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 that this will work. Mm -hmm. Often people that have an idea, they spend time doing busy work. It doesn't, not gonna produce results and ultimately produce to make it successful. Mm -hmm. So for me, what it came down to was multiple times I've had to, to really sell the belief in the show and demonstrate. So I had the economics and show it, show proof of concept. But once it gets to that, to, what are the hurdles? It all starts with the people. Uh, you got to get people to, to buy in. And it's not just buy your idea, but to buy into the process and what it's going to take to build a business. Mm -hmm. And I think that that often, Candy, is the hardest thing is people want to row the boat with you mm -hmm. and they're going to row it with you and to where we're going, not sitting behind you or trying to steer you a different way uh, that we're all doing it together. How did we overcome those challenges? I think as a leader, I've, I've heard this phrase a little bit lately that leaders should lead. Mm -hmm. I met a gentleman out of Ohio who's trying to, to really grow his coaching business. And that's what he talks about. And Leaders got to lead. They've got to keep the ship always moving forward and you can't accept mediocrity. And that's probably the thing I would tell you that is what I take the most pride in is, is I, I don't accept the average. I, I push, I drive. And when it, it doesn't mean that I'm a complete jerk to somebody that's not, but I will, I'm always very willing to show them to teach them, to coach them, even demonstrate how it's done, but then I expect them to do it because they're capable of it. Mm -hmm. They're not, it's not a question of holding them accountable. A good friend of mine, Brian Moran says, hold them capable. And so that's a great way to look at it is I, I've spent a lot of time taking the people and show them the path, demonstrate it, and and then, but then I hold them, you gotta get it done. Mm -hmm. And that's how you overcome, that's the biggest piece. And it all starts with people. But back up, you got to have a product and a business model, and it's got to work. You can't just throw stuff up against the wall because hope's a terrible strategy. Yeah. So when you talk about people, how many? What's your team size now? On um, in, in our break room business, we're about fifty employees. Fifty employees. Yes. In between sales, marketing, you have everything in house for the most part. All everything in is done in house, and in our mar on, when it comes to to the break room choices, that's all in house, and we we have a phenomenal team and. When it comes to Break Time U, we, we've partnered with an amazing marketing firm that, I mean, and then that's an advice that I can give folks is you got to find someone that can tell your story in this group inspired vibe. I mean, they are, they've brought the story to life and you got to invest your money wisely in, in certain things and marketing is that. So I, on Break Time U, we, ha we have an amazing marketing team that's brought a story to life that I, I couldn't be happier with. What do you think if some are the most, so, so what do you think are some of the most valuable investments that entrepreneurs can make in their business? And we'll just, I know it varies depending if they're in growth years or scale years, but if maybe somebody is, you know, below 10 million in revenue right now and they want to grow, they want to scale, what do you think are some of the best investments that people can make in their business? Well, first of all, you got to invest in your people because I come back to, if you've got a great product, then I, I would actually start with the product itself. What can I do to, it's one thing to have a $10 million business, but it, it, are your margins where they should be? Are your profits? Mm -hmm. So can you improve any of your processes? Uh, are you looking at what your cost of goods are to drive that? 
And it doesn't mean make it cheaper by buying cheaper components, but it's, are, are you doing what it can, whether through processes or, or components or products, any part of it to drive down your cogs. So I, I start there. But after that, you gotta invest in your people. Mm -hmm. You gotta make them simply better. And, and part of that's where the break time you piece came from was, I believe that people are capable so much more than what they are. So invest your time, not just money, but time into making your people the best versions of themselves. So if that's training, if that's going to uh, attending conferences, any, any type of pieces inv invest there. And then lastly, your, your image as a business, you've got to get out there and sell and focus on the different pieces is what, when I make an investment in something, what's going to make me money and a, the biggest return? Yeah. And it can't be just something that's a hope. I mean, the stuff that truly, if you again go into that financial model, you invest into that, it's going to provide a return that's going to multiply. And so spend your money wisely, but spend it where it's going to give you the biggest bang for a buck. And I don't know if that's much in detail, but I, I don't know about you, but I've been, the beauty of a break room business, you're in all kinds of businesses. Yeah. Yeah. And I honestly have been in thousands of them. And I say, you could spend your money on this and watch what happens. Mm -hmm. And it's actually what I, I don't know anything about the dental business, nothing. Yeah. But I'm involved in a dental business. And the beauty of it is I don't know anything about dentistry, but I, I can ask great questions and it's proved some results for them by just saying, why are you doing it this way? Mm -hmm. Why are you buying this when you could do that? Yeah. So that's good. I love that. And I love what you touched on. You were saying about, you know, the investments that you make and you didn't say it this way, but the way I interpreted it is measuring the ROI on that. Like, yeah. don't just go out to trade shows and events and seminars and conferences. If you don't know what that ROI is of who your target audience is, are those qualified leads going to be in that room to make sure that you're having the right sales conversations? Yeah. Are you doing your sales cycle? Are you driving people that are potential leads to a sales call or are they going through a funnel? How are they hitting to be to convert? So each business is unique. Mm -hmm. uh, the beauty of us right now is, as I described earlier, I could meet with an HR director today and be live in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So our marketing today when it comes to customer acquisition is all geared towards the piece that allows me to be up and running the fastest and mm -hmm. be generating revenue. And we have an established business. We know the model. We know what works. And so for us, we're pointing to the piece that allows us the, the fastest to, to install, fastest to generating revenue for the mm -hmm. company. And so for right now in us, that's that's the break room business. But from there, you also have to look at, and, and I think that people missed is they, they spend a lot of time, and this is just my experience, is there's, there's some people that spend so much time studying charts and I got to focus on margins when if I just sell a lot more of a product, then maybe it's lesser margin. Steer your marketing and go to trade shows, the stuff that's going to drive product that's overall going to make your business the healthiest. And, and I, that seems obvious, but if you and I walk into a business and ask that question to some folks, they don't have a freaking clue. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's, Candy, what scares me with some folks is I ask them that. When you go to a trade show, what's your objective? What products are you going to sell? And they can't give you that answer bang, bang, bang. Mm -hmm. That's where you have to start. Mm -hmm. And and that's, you're an entrepreneur out there. You got to know that. You got to know you're, someone in the business has to know that. Somebody has to know it. <laughs> and, and that's actually when I've coached businesses is, is I look at each department and, and I start asking hard questions. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't always make me very popular, but that's why they asked me to come there. Mm -hmm. So bring it back to break time. That person that's looking for something in their break room. They hear what you're talking about. They're like, oh my gosh, this would be great so that I can talk to all of my employees while they're on their break. Maybe they'll be on their phone less so that they're not consuming social media and they're learning something. And they're, I love the gamification angle. I think that that's brilliant. If somebody wanted to find more information, what's that process like? I know you said two weeks, but are they reaching out through your website? Are they talking to someone on your sales team? How do they reach out to find out more? 
Well, if I'm sitting, the, the beautiful thing is we're in the process of launching our, our mobile app here soon because when we launched Break Time U, we wanted to see how people behaved. It's before you, you can't build an app when you don't know how people are going to act. So once they do that, but they can visit our website, breaktimeu.com, click and, and get more information, whether it's as an individual or as a company. Uh, Break Time U, I could literally start learning. To, I, I, I can download, get registered and be learning in two seconds. So it's a beautiful thing. What our business model is, we're leveraging the relationships, Candy, that we have uh, that I've described a couple times is we want to make it that businesses, we are their partner and they want to do everything with us. We are their culture solution. And so that's uh, in the break room, it, it, breakroomchoices.com, it's, it's a pretty simple business. But I, I, what differentiates us is that we do so many more things. So many other things, yeah. yeah. If you could wave a magic wand, if I gave you a, a genie in a bottle to, to make a wish and one thing come true with that business, what are you hoping will happen? Well, uh, my, I, I have a podcast that I do called Let This Define You. And I'd like this to define that this is what I did, that I took a business that when COVID hit, revenues dropped 82% in two weeks. So, so when you had a business that when COVID hit, it dropped 82%. Three Square Market, our technology company and the industry as a whole, when lockdowns started, and everybody was working from home, the break room industry saw their revenues drop oh, yeah. 80 plus percent. Yeah. And think about that, okay? If something like that were to happen again, or even let's think about the work from home trends, mm -hmm. that more and more businesses are starting to move it, a break room business is going to get hurt by oh, that. Yeah. Our industry is gonna get hurt by that. And when I was leading our tech self-pay business, I said, we gotta change that. And so what waving the magic wand is that we break time you recruiting choices, uh, medical insurance, all the different things. We became that one-stop shop that our industry all of a sudden became that one-stop shop. And we provided four or five additional revenue streams that we completely changed in industry. So when, when my transition happened a year ago, uh, John Darren and I sat and said, you know, I'm not gonna be able to change the industry. I actually even tried in a number of different ways. So let's build a company that changes it. So when you talk about a waving a magic wand, I, I wanna impact people's lives through five minute learning segments that really helps make them better, makes them more loyal to their company, that we provide a, a break room service that actually has value, that they they find that it, you know, they're full, they're enjoyed lunch, they enjoyed their break time better. So they work harder, they're more successful. and. That's what I want to do. My father would be proud of the fact that I was not uh, going to sit back. I, I could have gone and been a golf ranger if I wanted to, but I wanted to do something more. And so I redefined who I was and what we, we want to redefine an industry together as, as a business and waving a magic wand three, four, five years from now. Our whole industry is a one-stop shop and they're doing so much more than bags and bottles. That's awesome. So just a year ago, when that's when you exited the other company. Prior to that, so we're only going back three years when COVID hit, that's when that business went down over 85%. Yeah, the, it's wow. recovered. The industry's come back. Yeah. But I still look back and say, if COVID hadn't hit, where would we be? Yeah. But I will tell you, you got to spend a little time with my wife. And I've been through a few times in my life where I've had to redefine who I am and who we are. And I've redefined my career a few times. And when our industry went through that, as many industries did, so many. everybody. Oh okay, so we, we were just on another interview. I was, we were talking about 2008, yeah. you know, 2007 I, during I was the, there. I mean, people that were in mortgage brokery, like you, people were closing. So you were, you were asked oh, what yeah. you were in back then. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you've dealt with so many different pivots along your way yeah. and so many challenges. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs always want to hear about the challenges. Nobody really cares because anyone can do a few things right yeah. and be successful. It's really not that hard, but it's what do you do to sustain success? That's yeah. that's where like the juiciness is. So you went through mortgage lending during that crisis. Is that what pivoted you into this world at all? Yeah, it, as you could, we all knew what was happening. Yeah. I was self-employed. Your business is worth nothing. And 
we were like bad. I mean, bad lawyers, oh bad used car. No one wanted to touch us. Yeah. And so all of a sudden I, I looked and having gone through medical catastrophe, you are in an industry that completely melted down. I said, I got to reinvent myself. And, but I wasn't going to be just, I wasn't just going to take a job so mm -hmm. I can retire when I'm 80. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to show my kids that you never quit. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted my wife to know we were going to be okay. And so I, we had an opportunity and I saw a business that was established that we could go to a whole nother level. Yeah. And I just did my part. They, they had built a, a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. I just did what I did best. And it was, it, it's not hard to get, sell a great product. It's hard to sell a lot of it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I think that that's, you know, there's great salespeople out there that don't get great results. Mm -hmm they don't spend their time on what's going to make the business money and consequently them. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time just, listen, I am going to grow this thing. And so we did. And so that that's what I did when I was in mortgage lending. That's what I did for 12, 13 years and leading our business and growing it is I'm relentless about it. And that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. I love that because I think it's so important. Like this conversation right now is probably the most valuable people are going to find because it shows that no matter where you are, no matter how much success you've had, everyone has had challenges. Everyone has had setbacks. Everyone has had to reinvent or rethink or reimagine something that they're working on. And not just for you, you've not just had professional challenges from the, the mortgage crisis to obviously then COVID in this prior company, but your family and what your wife has experienced, what your whole family has. I mean, obviously yeah. she dealt with the pain, but your whole family experienced it. And the fortitude and the grit that you have to have to continually force forward, no matter what is going on. Can we just touch a little bit about the mindset piece because I know that's a huge piece. It's only one piece. You still got to do the work and take the action and yeah. execute. But the mindset that you had when you already had a family, 2008, no one wants to touch you. Now you need to go figure out something else. Yeah. It happens again in 2020. What were some of the things that went through your mind and how did you control your mind to keep going in those moments when you wanted to quit? Because yeah. there's no way you didn't want to quit at some point. Yeah. I I can remember the closest I ever came to quitting, not suicidal, I stress that. Yeah, of course. But I was in Idaho and I'll never, it was that day that I flew home and, and I had hit rock bottom. It was three years after my, my wife's medical catastrophe and, and that's where my dad said, you're gonna let this define you or are you gonna go start defining it? Mm -hmm. And so stop letting this define you and go define. And, and what it came down to is you, one, you gotta show up, you gotta answer the bell yeah, you, you can't, as, as someone told me, is you, you can be discouraged for a day, you can't be for a week, and it can't become a month. Mm -hmm. uh, so part of it is get up each day and, okay, that's an opportunity. And that's something I always look at. I mean, uh, we all probably like to be in a little bit better shape or have a little bit more money in the bank, but the bottom line is, is uh, what did you learn from yesterday so that you are better today? And so... One of the, th the, the, the things I say, Candy, is if you always say lesson learned, you haven't learned a thing. You had to take action from what you learned so that you'd be better today, better tomorrow. And so that's what I always have looked at is I challenge myself and, and I'm my worst critic. And I think anybody that's a driver is. Mm -hmm. and, but I also challenge others. And I try to say, listen, I'm going to lead when I need to lead. And I'm also very willing at times, at times, to know when to step out of the way mm -hmm. and let others take the charge. And so, but most importantly, I felt having gone through what I had with, with Leah and, and my kids is I needed to be the person that says, we're not going to quit. We are going to beat this. And I look at what my kids have done. Uh, most importantly, I, I look how my wife has just never given up. She's the energy and the rock in our family. And you don't quit because she never did. And she had every reason to say, screw it. Mm -hmm. um, there's days even still now she's miserable, yet she answers that bell. And so that's why I tell people, learn your lesson. Don't keep saying lesson learned because if you haven't, you haven't learned a thing. Mm -hmm. Get out there, apply your lessons and go. Show up and make it happen. Yeah, it's interesting you, you brought up about the lessons because I feel like people often think that failure 
or a setback or a redirection is the opposite of success. But 25 years in business, I've found that every single redirection, every setback, every stumbling block that's thrown your way is actually just getting you closer to where you're actually supposed to be, right? Yeah. It's not like failure is the opposite of success. It's a part of it. And you've gone through so many iterations from you know, industries to businesses to your wife's health where I just, I'm curious now to like, what inspires you? You know, it's easy sometimes when you have leverage of failure or you've got kids to feed, but what now inspires you to keep going and to keep evolving and growing? Well, uh, have you ever watched uh, when you see people achieve f far greater than they ever thought they could? Mm -hmm. And when I, I go look for, I like to run. And why I like to run is I see people that are in different points of their life. Some are the folks that are working out every day. There's other people like me that are the, you know, they're out trying to, to, to stay in shape so they can live. Yeah, to live. There's, <laughs> That's there's me. the other folks that they're struggling. They're on a journey, but you can, you can see them. What motivates me is it and inspires me is to watch people that are, are no matter what they're doing, they're trying to make themselves better. And so I see in my role in, in life is, I go back to that phrase, is leaders must lead, but also don't follow. This world is infatuated with gaining followers, mm -hmm. gaining leaders. And I, I, what inspires me, people that are willing to lead, not to patronize, but as I've got to know you, we were laughing about your little Instagram post yesterday that bothered you. Mm -hmm. I, you, you literally are challenging yourself saying, well, why is that okay? Why am I going to let myself get sucked into their negativity? Yeah, That inspires me. I look for people that can challenge me to be better. And that's, that's what I always look for is I, I want to hang out with people that are going to make me want to be a better version of myself. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm honored to be here. And it's why I hope that some people look at what we're doing as a business and want to do the same thing. And as a family is what we've been able to do is, is the same way. You have four, four kids, four daughters, four daughters, girl, dad, hashtag girl, dad. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's this natural highlights. That's uh, that, you know, what are their ages? Uh, my oldest is now, let's see, she's 31. Okay. And my youngest is 22. And, uh, so they're all grown and yeah. on their own, out of the house? Uh, almost. Almost. Obviously, your family went through a lot. Yeah. Those daughters went through a lot. Your wife went through a lot. You went through a lot. A lot of challenges. Um, for those that don't know, your wife had a routine surgery. Supposed to last six weeks, correct? And it ended up being a life-changing life Yeah. How did that, because I think this is an interesting thing that happens, and I don't know why this happens. I would love to know why, but I feel like we always want to achieve and grow and make money and create assets and, and buy things. But there's something that happens when life shifts, and either it's a cancer diagnosis or it's something like your wife experience or you lose a loved one, that starts to just shift your priorities in life. I'd love to know if what you and your family went through with your wife's um, I don't even know what I should call it condition. I, I don't even know what we would call that. Um, the challenge that she experienced with mm -hmm. this life changing surgery that altered the rest of your lives. How did you, how did that shift? And if it did your priorities and the way that you, the perceptions that you have about life. I learned in life that there are, there are only two things that you cannot replace time and your health. Mm -hmm. You can replace everything else. You just take out a grocery list, take out a piece of paper, write it down. All of it can be replaced. I, I certainly learned that you either spending time to, to, to keep well or you're going to spend time overcoming not. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and while I wish that I was in a little better shape, I still take pride that I can run at 53 farther than most people can. And... Maybe not as fast as others, but I, that I can. I can keep up. I can do the, all the business things that I do. Uh, I can, obviously, my, my family is everything to us. But you either take care of your health and then you appreciate time. Now, let's face it, as, 
a success story that you are, your time gets taxed doing things that have built that success. Uh, and while I spent a lot of time being gone and that was hard, there were some lonely, lonely times. It also has now allowed me to spend time in at this portion of my life much more engaged, much more able to enjoy. Uh, it was a journey, but I look back to when this all happened, we didn't have an appreciated, we just lived life. Mm -hmm. And when all of a sudden your time is dictated by your health, it is a wake up call. Yeah, and it's it's interesting too, you wonder, cause it's like the, the action and the reaction, right? You wonder if maybe that's why two of your kids, two of your daughters are nurses and they're gonna provide, which our country needs such incredible nurses yeah. and they're gonna provide all this care. And maybe if that didn't happen, that wouldn't have happened. And so I think that's why it's always important that it doesn't mean that you don't have the right to give up and that it's not hard and it's not difficult, but what's the alternative to, to live in the, the sorrow and the pain of it all or to try to see a good side of it, right? And I think that that's what Leah seems to be doing, which is really inspiring. If she was sitting here right now, neither of us would, would want to go this path, but I think we both would say it was actually the best thing ever happened to yeah. us. I love your two things, time and health, yeah. so important. And I wanna ask you one final question. It's something I ask everybody on the show. Um, I wanna imagine you to imagine that you wake up tomorrow, that everything you've built, every dollar in your bank account, your employees, your company, everything that you have is gone. That nobody knows who you are. Nobody's gonna pick up your call because they know you. You only get to retain the information that's in your brain of what you've learned over your lifetime what would you start to do tomorrow to start building a business, to building wealth, to be able to survive? What are some of the first things that you would start doing tomorrow if you could only retain the knowledge that you have? I'd start networking. I, I When I went through this change a year ago, your network changes mm -hmm. and I learned the value of your network. And your network, both family and friends, when you think about it, if you lost everything, your, your network first is to start with your family. We, we would, I would start there to, to make sure that we're, hey, we're gonna be okay, because we've certainly been through what we've been through. We're gonna be fine, okay? Secondly, though, is work your network. What's out there? What, what opportunities? No different than I said is, and I learned a valuable, valuable lesson back in 2017. A lot of people are always looking to invent the next iPhone. Mm -hmm. There is incredible value when you can figure out how to take two things that totally don't seem related and make them work together. That's what we kind of what we did back in 2017. And I've taken that, that was a very valuable lesson. I would look at and look for opportunities within the network, within different things is how can I potentially start building that same bridge again? Look for opportunities that, again, it's not the next iPhone, it may be how do we make an iPhone in this table work together? Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, not a great example, but I'd start with the network and start looking where is everybody else? What are they doing? What opportunities are within that? What can I take my talents to go do? Because uh, ultimately I know I'm good at some stuff. There's other stuff I'm not great at, but I know when I focus on my talents, my network and answer the bell again. Answer the bell, yep. I love it. Let everyone know how can they find you, follow you on social, website, if they want to find out more about Break You. Yeah, so uh, LinkedIn, I, I keep busy on LinkedIn. Yes, I'm on Facebook and, and Instagram like everybody else. Uh, break, breakroomchoices.com, breaktimeu.com, recruitingchoices.com. Those are the businesses that we are feverishly working on and, and looking to, to change the world and the world that I'm in, and that's where they can find me. I have the easiest phone number as well, 480-690-6000. Uh, just phone, text. I'd love to, to talk. Love it. Thank you so much for coming on and for having this conversation with the, with the audience and everyone that's tuning in and listening today. I appreciate it. Andy, it was awesome. I enjoyed being here. Thank you. Thank you.